we happy and effective. Consultation with leading experts in the field makes it perfectly clear. All right, so getting started, we'll go into our preferences, search for box. We see that we're using version 705 of box cutter. And in this version, when we press Alt W to start, we have now a new option, join. So to get started, we'll just go ahead and just draw a couple of red boxes, let go without get adding any depth in order to do laser cut. Got a lot of emails and questions about laser cut. Sometimes these things will get missing in a release due to um, changes of so many people working at once but we got it back so thank you everyone who um, notified us of this so without further ado let me show you green box so we're just going to draw a box I'm going to press J to make a join box now this thing is connected via a boolean if we zoom in on it it has a very micro surface meaning that if we C sharp um, in this case we don't want to apply the booleans but it's going to anyways so we might as well just roll it on in there manually so we'll just put a bevel modifier set this to angle and that's it really so just kind of uh, doing it the hard way but this is the part I really wanted to highlight if you're using the bevel and you're trying to keep it flush with the surface that's something that we will need to put a little bit more thought into to sort out however in my general workflows of using a green box I would put a red box there instead and then use that to um, kind of flush the surface getting everything to be even so if we um, look at this in wireframe using control tilde going here and turning on wire we can uh, see what we have here so <clears throat> If I go here and I start just dropping some shapes in here, some bevel shapes, and it looks like we can't bevel after a raise, so that's still a bug we'll have to look into. So ideally in this situation, I would have wanted to bring it down, bevel it, then array it, and then it would have worked fine. So we'll hold shift to keep this here, and it looks like our wires got turned off. We're going to have to... Uh, rethink our solution for displaying the wires because users are reporting issues with it at the time of its creation I was also reporting issues with it but I can only ride people so hard so late at night so it is something we will be doubling back for so right here I'm going to use boolean scroll to uh, scroll through these and we're just going to locate the last cutter which is right here um, we will be needing to do an update to bull scroll as well to make it enable things that have been hidden with H because it's uh, different in 2.8 but you know uh, one thing at a time so we'll go ahead and apply this and I'm going to draw a box and press K for knife and we're just going to cut a line down the middle and so now this shape will support what we're cutting in there um, kind of like yesterday's lesson so We'll go here, put a circle here, and drop it in there, and then we'll hold a control. Let's try that again. We'll make a circle, and then we'll control click, which is not working still. So that's something that we'll also be checking into. However, today is also the um, release of Super Smash Brothers, so I did promise that um, you know we would chill out around this time, take a short break, uh, before moving on to the next phases which basically means working on other stuff <laughs> while we're playing this game so we have our shape in here I'm gonna have to turn wire back on because our solution for it just isn't adequate at this moment but we can go here locate this shape again the shapes kind of important it's like it needs a name so we'll draw a box Make sure there's no modifiers because a uh, knife will nuke your weights and I'm just off of it today it's because of all these buttons up top that we still have to click um, we definitely have some plans to reduce the amount of clicks and have these behaviors related to their cutters because more than likely you would never go in circle and draw with ovals um, but 
and that's a talk for another day. We're going to add a weighted normal just to uh, get our shading looking good. And continuing on, so I just want to show you a uh, green box again. So we'll bring a knife box down, press J for green, and we see that the connection just isn't nice. Um, and it probably won't ever be nice because we're using um, live modifiers. This is still a cube, but coming back with a small cleanup. I mean, you definitely could get it to work, um, but you would have to probably apply some things and start uh, modifying the surface. Also, we're going to change this uh, model's S-type to be C-sharp, because I know in C-sharp, the second option would be bevel adjustment. So continuing on, we'll draw a box here. Notice that now we're no longer shifting in and out of uh, destructive behavior. That was something undesired. Also, I do want to make this video a little bit quicker than usual. This is just to uh, get everyone up to speed on the 705 update and to let you know that we are still in the shadows. You know, I'll hold shift on apply so that way I can take this, just duplicate in edit mode, use shift R. Old habits die hard. I could have used a ray for that, but we did it that way. So you see that once you join in here, you can begin cutting away in order to make it work. Now, it would probably look a little better if we didn't have the bevel modifier, but the bevel modifier is kind of um, a shading assistant to me. Now, right here, all this can be avoided. So let's go under full scroll, object scroll. And here's the offenders and what we want to do is take the knife box that we're still in just cut them down the middle and then we want to locate this one this is our prime cutter so I jumped right to it we'll cut there using this area's uh, bevel and me personally I just tend to model a little cleaner I mean even though I'm using booleans, there is a way to uh, properly use them. So we'll cut here. And just to uh, test it out, let's bring in a little yellow box action. So I'm just going to press X, bring this box down, and we have our box. And we'll change this over to red. So I did have some suggestions on the improvements of laser cut. Um, hopefully they will be getting implemented. For example, I would prefer that um, laser cut be initiated pretty much uh, any time if you just have the, the cut thin enough. So basically if you extrude down and you bring it all the way back up and left click, that should laser cut. Um, okay, I guess it laser cuts now. Let's try it again. We're going to come down and say, you know what, we want a laser cut click and we have our laser cut so <laughs> laser cut has really become a thing um, I think there's a oh I'm thinking of a 3ds max tool I was gonna say I think there's a tool in 3ds max that does stuff like this that's called laser cut but I was thinking of key hydra so right here we want to cut something in here and maybe bring it back a little like that but if we look at this the result just will not be adequate so if we tab back out we see that this shape is mostly um, applied with a few modifiers so we know it's real enough for us to go in there and do that and call it a day I love blue box being in 3d <laughs> it is insane now um, so continuing on we'll jump back over to red box just take away a little bit more of the surface every time. Just cutting things away. So I think these boxes are almost in order of their most reliability, with red being the most reliable and green being down the road. But if in that case, blue would be ahead of the slice because blue is um, a shining star now. Uh, at the time that it was created, I almost thought that um, 
we would have to rethink the idea and go with something lesser, but Proxy managed to pull through in the last hour because I was already throwing out ideas that would um, be easier but serve the same purpose, which is allowing us to put edges on faces quickly to assist our booleans because the better that we uh, support the meshes that we're about to cut into, the more successful the shapes that we cut into will be. So I think in this quick video, uh, you guys got an idea right here. I'm just gonna bring a box in, press J for join. And you see that it just doesn't transition well with the surface. And I do wanna implement some sort of uh, green box offset that will automatically push the green box off the surface or into it a certain amount. Uh, either or would be an adequate solution. Um, but it is something that we do wanna have both in a dynamic format and um, in existence. So we do know that, you know, we could apply this and go in edit mode and do some magic and start, you know, merging surfaces, but that isn't, um, that's a little outside of the scope of what we intend box cutter to be, which is um, really quick, really nimble when it comes to doing this sort of stuff. So we'll track this down, rotate the view, bring it out. Let's see what it looks like. Of course, it looks inadequate. So we will go under object scroll, scroll backwards, one, two, three, four, find it. So I do love that looping is on by default because now it's easier to uh, go back in time on these uh, bull scrolls. Uh, previously in 2.79, I believe that was uh, toggled with pressing L. But now we are getting somewhere. So we'll put a box here, press J for join maybe G to uh, grab it and let's hold shift because I know <laughs> that I want to adjust it afterwards it just didn't look like it was going to work out so I do love shift being a modifier at the end in order to keep the shape um, because sometimes you can see it coming that hey I'm about to have to go through bull scroll do a bunch of steps re-enable some stuff and uh, just holding shift is a pretty easy way to uh, have that shape around in order to tweak it afterwards. But you know, I believe with this, um, you guys get the idea. So that is it. Version 705 with the introduction of Greenbox version 1. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.